across the grave tonight. I'm beginning to think it must be something I said. <laughs> or something I said. <laughs> Just up for a couple of days, eh? Who knows? Maybe longer if the finder like it. Hello? Anybody there? I'll go. So, uh, someone to keep you company then, eh? Yeah. I'll see you later. Evening, Maggie. Hello, Mike. Hey, look, I'm, I'm just about to come off duty in a minute. I was just wondering if I could uh, buy you a drink later. Oh, can we make it another time? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. It's just we're going to try that new restaurant outside Strensford. Right. Sorry, I'm late, Maggie. Mike? Hi. Good night, Maggie. Night, Mike. Ah, no worry. When you ready? Your gram. It's just a temporary arrangement, so I get my own pad. Where is she tonight? She's playing bingo. Won't be back for a couple of hours. <laughs> At least. I see. Oh. <laughs> this is me, Auntie Mary. Hello. Oh, uh, Oscar Blaketon. I run the village post office. Have you warned her, Gina? Warn me what? You'll need all your wits about you working behind this bar. There's some right characters coming here, I can tell you. There's one in particular, the name of Greengrass. I could write you a book about him. Are you back again? I tell her you owe me, right? Just a minute, Gina. Aren't you the two I sent packing from our backyard just half an hour ago? No. Oh, yes, you are. If you don't want it, I'll take it down to off license. Not this one, you won't. Yeah, that's ours. Which you just happened to find in a crate, right? Outside the back door. Mm. Hop it, the pair of you, before I get the bobby back. Mingy old bug. You what? Well done, Mary. That's the way to do it. Don't oh, catch me falling for that old chestnut. Trouble is, I think I have. Twice already this week. Haydensfield Arms. Hello. Has Claude Greengrass been in yet? Not yet, but I'm sure he won't be long. Can I take a message? Just hang on a minute while I find a pen. It's a pen. Oh, way off. Right. OK. And your name is? Kid and Ringo, what are you pair up to? Come to see you, Mr. Greengrass. Oh, what for? See what you're in the market for these days. Well, not another load of golf balls that you find <laughs> before they're lost, that's a certainty. So what then? Well, I wouldn't say no to a, a bit of copper, provided it wasn't nicked. Would we sell you duff stuff, Mr. Greengrass? <laughs> We'd sell your own grandmother if she wasn't nailed down. Go on, get up home. Johnny, me! Oh, hey, but it's dark in here. Oh, hello. Hi. <laughs> Go back early, Gran? Yes, well, there was some sort of power failure down at the bingo hall and uh, game abandoned due to bad light. 
Oh, I see. Uh, oh, uh, this is uh, this is Betty Spaulding, uh, a friend of mine. All oh, right, pleased to meet you, I'm sure. Likewise. All right, shall I make a cup of tea? Put the kettle on. There you go. Is that, is that it? Is that it? That's what he said. Coach shop. You know, that posh place up on the Scarborough Road. It, it, it didn't even suggest what it were about. Claude, he didn't even leave his name. He just said it'd be in your financial interest to be there tomorrow morning at 11. Perhaps you've come into money, Greengrass. Yeah. If I had another thing, you'll be getting a drink out of it. You surprise me. Phil, breakfast. Right. Morning. Morning, Grad. A bit like that this morning, is it? <laughs> Went to a club when we left here. It's two o'clock in the morning when we got in. Didn't wait you, did I? No, well, you know. I mean, I can never get off until you get in. Here. Is that not all right for you? It's lovely, yeah. Is she your girlfriend? Uh, just somebody I met at the dance I went to last week. I wonder they don't catch their death. Death? Skirts that short, they're more like palmets. <laughs> it's the fashion, though, isn't it, Gran? Is that what it is? All right. for something to eat on the way. There's a certain hostel we know of. Mm -hmm. well, the ale's good and the natives are friendly. Mm -hmm. Where well, I thought we might just while away a wee hour or so. Little brother. Why didn't you say it was you when you left the message? <laughs> Would you still have come if I had? In a word. <laughs> there you are, then. Come on in, you get. Well, where are we going? To see a man about a dog. <laughs> hey, take my truck round to my place. And hey, you're not sterling. Spalding last night, then? Like a house on fire. Till my grand turned up two hours earlier than expected. Oops. Very nearly. After which he spent half an hour cross-examining her about what her intentions towards me were. Not one of your best ideas, then, eh, Phil? Moving in with your grand. Oh, it seemed a good idea at first. You know, somebody to feed me and cook for me. Now she's acting more like my mother than my mother ever did. <laughs> Ashfordley Police Station. Oh, uh, yes, Mrs. Craddock. Uh, no, he's not in at the moment. Well, we're expecting him back any minute now. Uh, certainly I can. Oh. Right. Uh, ready when you are, Mrs. Craddock. <laughs> Oh, 
think I knew her mother. Here you are. I think everybody knew her mother. Thank you. Is that tobacco smoke I can smell in here? Oh, it's uh, probably coming from outside, Sarge. <laughs> We've got the window open. That's your theory, is it, Ventress? Yes, Sarge. So what's that behind your ear? Get rid of it. Right, Sarge. Oh, Sarge, uh, a message for you from Mrs Craddock. Oh? Uh, will you remember to pick up the fairy cakes for your tea on your way home? And uh, it needs some more of your ointment from the cabinet. Thank you, Ventress. Ask Fiddly, please. He is, yeah. It's for you. It's for Legton. Impressive, eh, Claude? Yeah, very impressive. But what's it all got to do with me? Let's uh, talk in the car, shall we? So let me get this straight. We was only looking at it. You were nicking it, Sonny. Not worth nothing anyway. But the copper inside it is. What about my brother's arm? If it's broke, it's your fault. Look, will you just do us all one big favour and shut up for a minute? Right. Come on. Let's have a look at it. See, what did I tell you? It is broke. Not necessarily. I think we better get a doctor to look at this. I don't want to go to no doctors. Oh, come on. It needs looking at. Yeah, and if it is broke, my mum will have you for a soul. Get them out of here, Bradley. Before you have to take me in as well. For murder! Come on. I bought him in Ireland last week. The only problem was when I got him home, she wouldn't allow him in the house. Claims she's allergic to fur and feathers. I still don't understand, Cyril, exactly what it's got to do with me. Well, you've seen for yourself what the dog can do. And once she realises that there's money to be made out of him, she's going to have a miraculous recovery, isn't she, from this allergy of hers. <laughs> so? So, his uh, first race is next weekend, and if I could just find somebody to look after him for me until then. And you can rest assured you'd be uh, handsomely compensated for your trouble. Oh, yeah. How handsome? Well, I reckon uh, ten quid would be fair. Dear, make it twenty, it might start to look a bit tall and dark as well. <laughs> Let's have a look at this. Is that tender? There's nothing broken, anyway. What happened to you? That old copper that runs a post office knocked him over. It's not exactly the way I heard it, but uh, never mind. Well, it's certainly bruised, but nothing that won't heal over a couple of days. So we can go, then? Well, I suppose so. But don't go helping yourself to anything else out of other people's backyards, or next time I really will run you in. So what about Plankton? It's Mr. Blaketon to you, and what about him? Well, aren't you going to do it for assault of a minor? But will you two get out of here before I change my mind? Things will save us. Let's find out, shall we? Right! <laughs> What's your middle name, pal, eh? Sterling Moss? Some sort of problem, is there? You nearly took my brother's souls off! You just watch in future. Right. What was that you were saying about the natives? Wrong domino! I've not played it yet, have I? Well, hurry up and play it then, will you? Well, will it? Give me a minute. Well, hurry up then. I'm gonna play it. Demi! I bought them last week. What are you on, I wish I'd known that. Wrong domino, I said. You better get lost. That's enough. Now drink up and get out of here. Oh, come on, love. You heard her. Out. Now. And if we don't, what? Then it's going to be a long time before your next pint, isn't it? Now, are you going or aren't you? Come on. 
Like Mr. Blaketon said, you get them all in here, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Formey, I'll put out your description. Don't worry, whoever's taking it won't have got very far. In the meantime, I'll uh, just have a quick word with the staff inside about those lads you mentioned. Right. Come on, Alec. The car was fully insured, wasn't it? Of course it was. Well then, well, what is it, Alec? I think they're from Ashfordley. You know what their names are, they? Just know them as Chuck and Billy. Constable? Yep. Could I have another word? Of course you can. There's something else I think you should know. A radio isotope? In the boot of the vehicle. So, is it likely to blow up or what? I don't know, Sarge, but it contains Cobalt 90, which is extremely radioactive. How safe is it? Well, according to Mr. Formby, perfectly safe. As long as nobody's stupid enough to tamper with it. To go to Billy quick. So, if I can just get this quite straight, Mr. Formby. You left the isotope in an unattended motor vehicle in a public house car park while you and your fiancé were inside boozing, is that right? We'd just stop for a quick bite, that's all. Yeah, but what were you doing with a radio isotope? I'm a research student. I was on my way to a laboratory in Leeds. The isotope's perfectly safe. So long as it's in the protective casing. And what happens if you take it out of protective casing? Well, you'd be irradiated. Meaning? You'd die within about 24 hours. This way, oh. Mr. Formby. Thank you. Right then, Bellamy, if you'd like to escort Mr. Formby and Miss Harding here to the interview room, I'm sure they'll be only too happy to provide you with the details. This way, please. Any word from Division, Ventress? Oh, yes, Sarge. Uh, they're sending someone over from the Radiological Protection Service. Uh, they want us to tell the uh, Radium Institute what's happened and get the BBC to put out a warning on the wireless. BBC, eh? Better find out just what we're looking for, then. There must be some cop going round here somewhere. Forget it, Trevor. Who cares, anyway? I care, cos I'm broke, huh? Hang on a minute. Now what? If I wanted money, I'd go to the bank, right? Not robbing a bank now. No, cos it's not money we're after, is it? At least not straight away, anyway. It's scrap. So? Mr. Farrington from the Radiology Protection Service. Mr. Farrington, good of you to get over here so quickly. Any news of the car yet? No, I'm afraid not. Excuse me. Craddock? Yes, Bradley. What? Anybody hurt? Okay, Bradley, get yourself out there. We'll be with you as soon as we can. Bingo. They found the car. 
Yeah, what's his name? Irish Rover. Ten out of ten for originality, eh? Hey, I thought you said you wouldn't have a note more to do with that brother of yours. Never look a gift horse in the mouth, David, even if it's a dog. I know a little flapping trap where they've got a meeting tonight. Hey, you're not going to race him, are you, Mr Greengrass? You try and stop me. Well, what if your brother finds out? I'm not going to tell him, am I? Well, it was definitely here. No, afraid not. Which means what exactly? Well, at least the seal still hasn't been broken. That's something to be thankful for. Sarge? And there's plenty of it. Oh, so whoever was driving was hurt in the crash. And in need of medical attention, I'd say. Those two men you're asking about in the pub at lunchtime? Yeah. That's one of them over there. What's wrong with him? Well, he says he cut himself on the nail. Oh, yeah. David. You got an image? Oh, no, I've got about ten shilling, Mr Greengrass. Well, give me it, I'll stick it on with my... I'm not really a gambling man. Gambling is a racing certainty. Come on, fill your boots. Alf. Any joy in that car? Uh, not yet, no. Oh, uh, your grand rang. No. She wants to know whether you're going home for your tea. What did you tell her? I thought it was highly unlikely, under the circumstances. <laughs> She's driving me mad, Alf. I thought you were getting on with her. We do. It's just... It's little things. Like she's uh, cramping your style. Like tidying my bedroom all the time. Checking whether I've left a rim round the bath. Not to mention her insisting I have a full English breakfast. Well, what are you going to do about it? Well, what can I do about it without hurting her feelings? It's the last thing I want to do. Well, well, well. If it isn't little Billy Forsley. Been caught with our hand in the till again, have we, Billy? To the armpits, by the look of it. Uh, Billy Forsley, Sarge. He was at the hospital getting his arm stitched up. After catching it on a nail, he said. Oh, you're the ones doing the stitching up. I know nothing about a stolen mini, all right? Of course you don't. But since you are here, Mr Forsley, perhaps you wouldn't mind answering a few questions. Here they come again. Can't you 
told you to know nothing about that. You listen to me. We know you stole that car. But it's not just a stolen car we're on about. It's much more serious than that. What are you talking about? It's what was in the car boot, Billy. I don't understand. You mean you and your brother don't even know? What? But, but what happened, Mr. Greengrass? Why did he just stop like that? Because he's a chaser. Chaser? Yeah. He'd rather chase all the other dogs than the flaming rabbit. Just that greyhound makes him about as useful as an ashtray on a motorbike. Oh, I see. The question is, does our Cyril know that? Well, where is he? I thought you said you'd put him in here. I did, I did put him in there. Well, he ain't in here now, is he? Pete <laughs> Coppers. Mr. Anderton. Hi. Sergeant Craddock, I should be police. This is Police Constable Bradley, Mr. Farrington. We've reason to believe you've a wrecked Mini in your scrapyard, which was stolen this afternoon from Maidensfield. I know not about a Mini. Mr. Anderton, we can find it ourselves. And when we do, we won't just do you for receiving. We'll also do you for obstructing the police in the execution of their duty. Is this the one you're looking for? This is the one, Sarge. Just a minute, Constable. Okay. Thank heavens for that. I'm afraid not, Sarge. What is it? Well, I reckon. And he always brings a good price, does lad? Any luck? No, all clear. Distance from the crash site to your scrapyard? Seven mile up there. Is it anyone suspicious in the vicinity? Well? No sign of it, Sarge. You're sure of that? If it were here, I'd find it. Anything could have happened to it, Sarge. It could have been nicked, Epp. Look, it could have fallen out the back of the car when it was being towed. Well, we'd better start looking. Mr. Anderton, we need you to show us the route you took from the site of the crash. You're never going out again already, are you? It must have been half past two when you got in last night. It's all hands to the pump, I'm afraid, Gran. As long as that isotope's still missing. Here, it's not going to blow up, is it? Only I heard on the news it were atomic. That's one thing it won't do. But it's still very dangerous, though, isn't it? Oh, stop worrying, Gran. Mm. Well, I can't help it, can I? It's a very worrying life you leave in the police. Well, you know what they say, Gran? About a policeman's lot. What about your breakfast? Uh, oh, uh, well, I'm going to have to give that a miss today, I'm afraid, Gran. I'm late as it is. Oh. Hello. Seen your brother yet? 
No, I have not seen him yet, David, because I've only just got up. And now my mum, she always says that you should just get it over with. I mean, if it's something you're not looking forward to doing, that is. Uh, where'd she read that? On the back of a crisp packet. The trouble is knowing my brother who wants his money back. Money I haven't got thanks to that flaming greyhound of his. Yeah, I suppose you're right. I can't put it off forever, I suppose. We'd better get round there. Mate, you want me to come with you? Well, you were the one in charge of it when it went missing. The least you can do is come with me to face the music. That's all we need. What do you two want? Got that stuff you asked for, Mr Greengrass. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're in a bit of a rush. I was digging in the shed. I'll sort your money out later. That's left. That's going to be worth a few bob, hasn't it? Uh, probably. If you stick it on the shed, I'll sort it out. seem to be in something of a logical cleft stick, gentlemen. We have the box used for transporting the isotope, but somewhere between the crash site and Anderton's scrapyard, the isotope itself has gone missing. I suppose we're sure it was in the box when the car was stolen? Oh, spare us, Bellamy. I think even Mr Formby would have noticed if he was loading an isotope that wasn't there into the boot of his car. No, I mean, could it have been stolen in the pub car park? Why would somebody steal the isotope, but not the box it came in? No, nope. must have been stolen from the scrapyard. Well, it's not Mr. Anderton or his workman. I mean, they're both terrified. So, who else do you get hanging round scrapyards? Kids. Now, what we're looking for is a lead bottle about this big. All right. And inside it, there's this stuff called Cobalt-90. Now, it's what we'd call an atomic isotope, but it's very, very dangerous. So, if any of you have seen anything like it or know anybody who has, anybody at all, you come and tell me about it, all right? Oh, and one last thing. None of you will get into any trouble if you come and tell me about it. All we're interested in is getting it back safely. All right? Yeah? Good. Thank you, Mr. Greengrass. Ah, oh, thanks, love. Mr. Greengrass, I was hoping I'd catch you. Have you gone out of your tiny mind? What the devil are you doing here? You said get the dog, Mr. Greengrass. Yeah, but I didn't say bring him to me, you... You nincompoop. So what do you want doing with him, Mr. Greengrass? What do you think I wanted? doing with him now that is what you might call surplus to requirements you don't mean that's exactly what I mean yes Harry preferably humanely and as far away from here as possible right Mr Greengrass What for? He said it was atomic. Exactly. I bet it'll make a dead big explosion. You wouldn't. Wouldn't I? Not daring me, are you? What does she want? A word charge. Couldn't you deal with her? Well, she insists on talking to you. It's Mrs Bellamy, is it? Philip's grand, yes. Only Philip's out just at the moment, you see. Oh, well, I was hoping he would be. It's you I wanted a word with in private, you know. Oh, yes. You must have noticed how peaky he's been looking, and I put it down to lack of sleep. I see. Yes. You know, if he had four hours last night, he were lucky, and the previous night, even less. Did Philip tell you we've got a bit of a rush on just at present, Mrs Bellamy? Yes, but a boy of that age, you need to sleep, Sergeant. I mean, he's only human. Right. So... 
as you knew, not a bit like that other one they had here, from what I've heard. I could never really take to him, you know. Very bombastic, even for a sergeant. So as I was passing, I thought I'd have a word. Yeah. Right. Gran. Oh, um... What are you doing here? I, I'm sure the sergeant will tell you all about it, um, when he's got a minute. If you'll excuse me, thank you very much. All right. What's she been saying, Sarge? It seems she's got it into her head, Bellamy, that we're working you too hard. Oh, no. Sorry about that, Sarge. Don't mention it, Bellamy. There's nothing I like more than having a quick tete-a-tete -tete with one of my constable's elderly relatives in the middle of a major crisis. The big question being, should I stand you down for 48 hours so that you can catch up on your beauty sleep? So you knew the dog were no good? Unhappily, something I discovered only after I'd paid good money for him. And you thought of the bright idea of insuring him, leaving him with me, and then arranging for him to mysteriously disappear? Well, I thought it'd be just that bit more plausible for you to be you rather than me. Especially since you, uh, didn't know what was going on. Well, now that I do know what, we can still work it. All you have to do when the insurance assessor comes around is to tell the truth. You took the dog to a race meeting and somebody nicked him. You've got more chance of knitting fog. <laughs> Not going soft in your old age, are you, Claude? Not going soft in the head, if that's what you mean, which you, you obviously are. If you think you can con the insurance company like that, well, you do what you like, Cyril, but just leave me out of it. I'm disappointed in you, Claude. I really am. Not as disappointed as you're going to be when the gentleman in the wig sends you down for about five years. Well, uh, what's going to happen to the dog now, then? Never mind about the dog. What about that 20 quid I advanced you? Oh, keeping that as severance pay. It'll make up for all the aggravation you cause me, you poultice. Aren't you going to tell them? No. They said you wouldn't get done. That's what they always say, don't they? What are you going to do? Wait and see. Right, lads, five o'clock at Silla's Drop. You're mad. You're not coming as well? Don't want nothing to do with it. Coward. to sleep, isn't he? Not oh, brother, he's doing that insurance thing. Don't start again, David. It's Cyril's dog. He can do what he likes with it. Yeah, but it doesn't make it better, though, does it? No. No, David, it doesn't make it better. But what do you expect me to do about it? I don't know. Oh, looks do something wrong. That was that was having a wife, you are. That any member of the public finding a lead bottle answering the description against tampering with the content. A lead bottle? What is it, Mr. Greengrass? That, that lead thing the Chivers lads brought around. Yeah, what about it? That, that was a bit like a bottle, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah, go and get it. It's in the shed. <laughs> uh, uh, it's not funny, Mike. I'm gonna sort something out. Uh, well, there's always Regulation 17, Paragraph 3. Regulation 17, Paragraph 3? Uh, yeah. Unmarried police officers must live in police accommodation for at least, what, nine months of any given calendar year. I've never heard that before. No, 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 you wouldn't. I just made it up. <laughs> right. <laughs> What's he want? What's up, Claude? Hey, that, 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 that um, radioactive what's it you're looking for, I've seen it. Where? At my place, the Chivers lads brought it round, but it's gone. Well, where is it now? I don't know. They, they, they must have come and took it, though, because they were the only ones who knew where it were. Right, let's go. Is 
Is your mother in? Gone to visit a boyfriend. A boyfriend? In prison. What about your brother? He's out. Look, okay. where's that thing you took down to Greengrass's this morning? Trevor's got it. He's gone to set it off. Set it off? Till this drop. He's gone up there to meet his mates. Boys got the isotope. They're meeting up with Silla's drop, Sarge. We'll meet you there. Out. Right. Entrance, you can drive. Mr. Farrington, bring that thing. That's the place. Come on, I've got it. Put that, put that on it. Put it there. Trevor, just hang on. I've got some rope in the van. Help! It's all right, Trevor. Don't worry. Just hang on, okay? And whatever you do, don't look down. We'll be with you in a minute. Come on, Phil. Where did you then? He's down here, Sarge. Phil, come on, we don't have much time. What about the isotope? What about it? Look, look, just get that rope tied off around that tree and fast. Empress. You'll need this. Good lad, Trevor. Just, just keep close right. to the wall. Say this. Show the ice, sorry. A bit of slack there, lads. Come on, Al, give me some slack. Nice and tight now, lads. Keep it tight, Sarge. It's all right, Trevor. OK. OK, Slack. More Slack, Sarge. OK. OK, a bit more Slack. Now just give him the other hand. Put it through there. Good lad. Don't let go. Please. Please, just don't let go. Watch out! All right, Phil. Tight. Are you getting a reading? No, no reading. All clear. All right, Phil. In your own time. All right, Al. Slowly does it. Take you back. My pet. Come on! Come on! Come on! Don't! Don't let me go! Keep going! Keep going! Really there? Back out! Come on! Put your hands! Don't let me go! Give me your hands! Give me your hands! Come on! That's it! Good lad! Good lad! Come on! Yeah, I don't feel safe now. Let's get this rope off you. You all right now? Take it up, lads. Steady. Go on. Come on, keep going. Go on. Slowly, slowly. slowly. Give your hand. Give your hand, man. Come on. Slowly. Slowly out. Come on. Nice. Oh. Oh. Oh, well done. Is he all right? He'll live, won't yeah. you? What you say? Yeah. Are you well, ready? I think I'll survive. Well done. Good work. This is intact. Good. No. Here he comes now. Here he comes. Hey! What can I get you, 
my... Uh, a pint of bitter, please, Jean. Uh, Gina, I'll get that. Are you, are you getting around in, Oscar? That's right, Greengrass, and you're not included. Oh, there's a surprise. Well done, Mike. Oh, well done, Mike. Well, thanks very much, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. Not Cheers. likely to glow in the dark from now on, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not, no, no. And the lad? Oh, he's OK. He's um, up at the hospital getting checked over. Little brother! What are you doing here? Where is it, then? Where is what? My dog, of course. Who do you think? Don't tell me it's gone missing again. What are you trying to say, Claude? You know nothing about it. Cyril, that daft dog of yours has practically cost me my life savings. What will I want with it? We wouldn't want him turning up here, would we? Right after I've claimed for the insurance... I have had nothing to do with the disappearance of your dog. But why don't you go thou forth and do likewise? <laughs> Not a very nice thing to say to you, big brother. No, but it is sincere. Gran? Yes? About this morning when you came to the station. Oh, yes. Um, it's just Sergeant Craddock didn't realise till then I actually lived here. Oh, yes. Well, if you were going to tell me I was out of order, I suppose I was, having thought about it. But I don't know if I'm on my head or my heels. I mean, when you're coming in, when you're going out, or even some nights whether you're coming in at all. And I do worry. I try not to, but, but you do. You can't help it. It's... You, you're trying to tell me, Gran? It's getting to you, me, living here. Oh, no, I love having you here. You know I do. But you, young policeman, you lead such mad lives. And, and when you get to my age, you just need to take things a bit slower. You're all right, Gran. Honest. Well... In fact, it's funny you should mention it, really. Well, congratulations are in order, Bradley. That was a good piece of work yesterday. Why, well, thank you, Sarge. In fact, I've just had the boy's mother on the phone about it. How is he? He'd be all right, apparently. She isn't very happy, though. She isn't? See, the way she sees it, if you hadn't been chasing that lad, he'd never have fallen down that cliff in the first place. So she's written to the chief constable, she says, alleging police brutality and harassment. Oh, terrific. What are you doing with him? I'm not taking him back, Mr Greengrass, not to be put down. All right, you can keep him. Oh, thanks, Mr Greengrass. But there's a couple of buts. You tell nobody where you got him from, all right? And you give him a new name. What shall I call him? It don't really matter. He probably won't come anyway. Well, I think I might call him Claude after you. Why is that? Because he can't run and he owes everybody money. No. It's because I think he might be my best friend. Is he? Well, you better get off home with him before you find out I'm not. 